to go back to the first little snippet that we played yeah. where Bruce Arian says everyone was handing us the Lombardi in August. He said something similar to that to Tracy Wolfson of CBS. I caught her report during the game yesterday. Hey, hey, Bruce, that's an argument you make in August. You you wrapped your arms and legs around that back in August. Nobody from the Buccaneers was saying, whoa, hey, whoa, t- don't be handing us the Lombardi now. We haven't proven anything yet. They loved that then because they thought that's where they were heading. People believed it, and they didn't do anything to pull the bar down, just like the Browns of 2019. The bar's high, fine with us. Yeah, right. Now that they're not making it over the bar, well, whoa, oh, the bar was too high. Don't tell me that in late November, Bruce. You tell me that in August when people are putting the bar that high. Well, I, hey, uh, you know, it's it's after a game frustration. It's a little bit probably frustration. I said it before the game, too. I he know. said it before the game, yeah. too. This is his new, this this is his new, new thing. Well, mantra. Oh, you gave us the Lombardi back in August. Well, you kept your mouth shut about it back in August, and we know that Bruce Arians isn't bashful about opening his mouth, so he should have said then we're getting ahead of ourselves. They believed it back then. They don't believe it now. That's the difference. Well, yeah, they're feeling the pressure. That's what I was going to say. You know, that, yeah, you lose yesterday and that pressure, and then you're feeling the pressure of being in 7-5, and five, right, with all that talent they have on the football team and Tom Brady and all the talk. So I'm sure there's a little uneasiness down there, as you could see. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Expectation levels are high. It still seems they're like a, a team that's kind of just, you know, a work in progress. Again, it was another one of those offensive showings where you were just like, okay, there was some really bad, there was some really good, and there was some in between. Um, but, yeah, they're, they didn't expect to be sitting here 7-5 and five right now towards the bottom of the NFC, you know, playoff picture. And, and, you know, of course, going into a bye week, having to fight here the last four games of the year. Yeah, no, that's absolutely right. Seven and five, they get a late buy. They are out of it for all practical purposes in the NFC South. The question is, can they hold on to the five, the six, or the seven and get to the playoffs? And it looks like they should be able to, but who knows at this point? Who knows what's going to happen right. over the course of the next two weeks? One of the things that Bruce Arian said yesterday on the way out the door for the bye week, we got to be careful with the virus because once you set guys out into the community – for a few days, they may come back positive, and you may have a problem at a time when the numbers are off the charts, and nobody really seems to notice. Nobody really seems to care. Bruce Arians notices, and he cares because it may affect his ability to field a football team yeah. in two weeks when they take on the Vikings, who may be six and six if they beat the Jaguars. Will be six and six, and, then and you're in position going... to catch right. catch the Buccaneers in the playoff chase. So that next game which looked like a gimme. It looked like a check the box. No it looked way. like a no big deal. That's got the potential to be a, a, a mid-December playoff game. It, it, it definitely does. They, they've put them in a little bit of a tough spot here as far as where they were to where they are now. I mean, losing three out of the last four football games and uh, not playing up to the level we saw, saw maybe, you know, when they were blowing out the Raiders and Green Bay Packers and everybody like that. But, you know, uh, Atlanta, the way they're playing, to have to play them twice down the stretch – you know, Matt Ryan, Raheem Morris, they're not going to go down easily in that one. You know, so there are some, you know, intriguing matchups here. But, yeah, that Minnesota Vikings one, whoa. Vikings win, like you said. Now they're both 7-6. and six. If the Vikings could upset Tampa and pull that off, uh, we wouldn't expect that. So it's going to be interesting. But the Bucks not playing good football right now. And they deserve to be right in that little, you know, spot they are. We saw yesterday, it's a tale of two teams. And you just don't know what you're going to get out of them right now depending on which half, which quarter, or, or whatever part of the game it is. The good news for the Buccaneers, when they return to action, the Vikings do not have Patrick Mahomes and Tyree Kill. The bad news for the Buccaneers, the Chiefs did, and they made repeated use Whoa. of that combination. My goodness, Mahomes and Tyree, three touchdowns. It could have been worse. Over 200 receiving yards in the first quarter for Tyree Kill. He finished with 269. I mean, we were looking up the all-time single-game record. Flipper Anderson, 336. We thought that was in jeopardy yesterday, and it was for a while. It just petered out. And that's the thing about the Chiefs. We talked about this last night, Chris. They flipped the switch on. They flipped the switch off. And you don't have to have it on for very long to win a game. But my God. If they could just keep it going for all four quarters, yeah. they could score 100 points. Oh, no, there's no doubt. There was yards and points left all over that field last night. I mean, as, as impressive as a game as it was for Patrick Mahomes, 37 to 49, 462, it, it should have been like 
43 of 54 for 500. He may, he could have broke the record last night is what I'm trying to say. He had a chance to break the all-time passing record. But to your your point, they went through a – just they fell asleep. And, you know, th that to me is the frustrating thing about the Chiefs, to what you're saying. I mean, a, a little bit. We see this all the time, these explosions and then these dull moments. And last night, I mean, Ford with danger once again there, you know, in a 425 game. And, and to me, like, I get all these texts during the game, like, you know, from friends who are ex-football buddies. Damn, oh, the Chiefs defense, can they close a game out? It, it's not on the Chiefs defense to close the game out. There's $9 zillion on the offense of the Chiefs. They're supposed to close games out. It's their job. When you got your foot on their throat and it's 27-10 and McCole Hardman's wide open going down the middle of the field, you know, that, it, that's the point where you go, all right, yeah, our defense isn't great, but our offense is so great that we're just going to put our defense in a spot here where they can't even mess it up and you can't make a game of it. And it is frustrating, but damn, I don't know. They always answer the bell when they need to, right? Oh, okay, we need a few first downs and we haven't done anything? No problem. We'll get a few first downs. Game will be over. Uh, but I want to see that maximum potential like you're talking about. Yeah, and, and look, that did give the opening to the Buccaneers. And to their credit, they, they did what they had to do to try to make a game of it. It all just kind of felt like it was in slow motion. Yeah. Everyone was sleepwalking, especially the Chiefs after that point. And to your point, Patrick Holmes really could have ended up with the single game record. He Do you know who holds the single game record? Do you know? Oh, um, hold on. I want to say it's Norm Van Brocklin at like 561. 554, Norm Van Brocklin, okay. September 28, 1951. And and he, here's what's also impressive. The uh the 500 club. Yeah. Uh, Mahomes isn't in that. Right. There's a there's a guy there's a guy here, Sims. Yeah, Big Phil. Phil Sims. Big Phil had one. Phil in Sims in the 500 Club. Through, yeah, uh, 513. 513 in 1985. Yeah, I know. There's some, some big numbers there. But, uh, yeah, I think he had two weeks in a row where he went for, like, 430 and 514 back-to-back -back weeks. But, yes, I mean, to your point, I mean, we were both watching the game together. There was just there was a lot of plays where you just go oh 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 my gosh off his fingertips oh that's oh my unbelievable he really did he had a chance to break that record last night uh, but they kind of lost their concentration as they always do and then just regained it when they needed to as always and come through in the end of the football game. One of the reasons why the numbers were so astronomical early for Tyree Kill. The Buccaneers made the rare, and there's a reason why it's rare, decision <laughs> yeah. to cover Tyree Kill one-on-one. -on -one. Here's Bruce Arians after the game talking about that failed strategy. Yeah, but he had a man-to-man. -man. You know, we tried to get a safety to him if we could. You know, you got Kelsey on the other side, too. So it's a lot of weapons. But uh, when we did play man-to-man, -man, uh, Patrick found him, and they made some really good plays. Oh, yes, they did. And, and, and look, that's the challenge for any offense that has a weapon like Tyreek Hill. Anytime you see him man to man, you got to get the ball to him. And, and Arians is right. If you put too much emphasis on Tyreek Hill, you're, you're letting Travis Kelsey beat you. And yeah. that may be one of the reasons now skill and ability is one of the reasons as well. But if, if they're always sliding the coverage over to Hill, it's going to open things up for Travis Kelsey. So you pick your poison. And and look, that's that's the reality. The, 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 you know that the Chiefs are going to score their points. And at the end of the day, the fact they only had 27, I mean, if you tell the Bucks going into the game you're going to hold yeah. the Chiefs to 27, they say, we'll take that. No. Let's just go try to score 30. No, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, and hey, it was there to be had. The, the Buccaneers, they move the ball consistently. You know, the second half. We saw the two turnovers from Brady, right? When he got a little pressure in his face. Both interceptions, but on both of those drives, they were moving the ball there, too. You know, and, and you know, as far as playing man-to-man -man in that conversation with Tyree Kill, I, there's only – I've really only seen one human on earth that can really do that, and that was Jalen Ramsey. He's the only guy I've seen that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, and Tyree Kill just won't absolutely go off. He might get four catches for 65 yards, but he won't do what you saw there last night. That is ridiculous. You know, they'll the leave Carlton Davis in some of those positions that they left him in. I don't care who it is. There's just no way he can win that. 
There has to be the, 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 the X's and the O's. Yeah, the, the X's. Oh, we got him covered. He's it looked good. good He's on good. the board. Yeah, it looked good on the board. It's twenty-four. <laughs> you got ten. Okay, we're sure up there. Let's move on. But but there has to be something else. And you know the teams that always dabble in man-to-man -man and things like that. Okay, you can leave a guy man-to-man. -man, but as we've seen, like with the New England Patriots and their attack against Mahomes and the Chiefs. You know, okay, it's single safety, it's man-to-man, -man, but the single safety is always aware that, oh, wait, I got Tyree Kill man-to-man -man here. Let me help that corner out by body presence or being closer to him to just scare away Mahomes from that matchup. And just there was none of that. It was like, hey, Carlton Davis, you're a good football player. We think you're Darrell Rivas in his prime, apparently. Go out there and cover him all over the field, and that's just not possible with that human being because – how many rockets does Tyreek Hill have up his butt? Well, if three is the maximum, yes. I'd say three and a half. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. You might have three with a little <laughs> turbo boost in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. The, the Buccaneers offense ultimately did wake it up. And one thing that's encouraging, I saw Mike Evans catching a couple of touchdown passes when the game seemed to be out of reach. 27-10. Last two scores of the game. 31-yarder from Brady. 7-yarder from Brady. And you know they, they you know, what if if you're trying as a bucks fan or just an eternal optimist if you're trying to come out of this game glass half full offensively what what's 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 the case you make to the bucks as to why they should feel good going into their bye well you know you're you're sitting down there 27-10 and you're going oh man it looks like we're done we're in trouble this one's over and all of a sudden they kind of get in a rhythm with the touchdown, you know, at the end of the first half, field goal to start the second half. You know, we talked about the two interceptions, you're moving the ball. But then late in the game, I mean, right down the field, right down the field on two touchdown drives where you're going, hey, if Mahomes and company don't get the ball, if they don't get first downs here, the, the Chiefs have shown no signs of slowing down the Bucks here the last few drives. They're going to go down the field and at least kick a field goal, if not score a touchdown. So, again, with the Bucks. You know, they're a little bit frustrating, too. We see these glimmers of going, wow, okay, this is the team I like. This is what we – this this is awesome to watch. There's just so many peaks and valleys right now. And I go back to the same thing. I, again, I got to watch the game back on film. We're getting ready for a show. We're watching that and all these other games. But I just thought, once again, when they get out of their shotgun spread it out mode, and that's what I felt like I saw a little more in the second half is, again, the tight ends, the Ronald Jones, just a little running game. Oh, Gronkowski on deep crosses, play action pass, things like that. That, to me, is when they're really effective and they can play with anybody. But I just don't know. Is it Brady or Bruce Aarons who wants to get in the shotgun spread and throw the ball all over the field and play this four- and five-yard dink and dunk thing? And they're not built like that. And honestly, Brady's not good enough to where he's just going to carry the team like that against all teams every week, every week, every week. And uh, that would be the silver lining to me with the Bucks is that look at that offense in the second half. They do have to figure out what they are and who they are. That's and it. What they plan to be right. offensively. And last week, I I'm sorry, I love Bruce Arians. And, and he's deserved all the accolades he's gotten. He should have been a head coach a lot earlier in his career. One of the reasons he wasn't Definitely. is he doesn't play the game. He doesn't kiss butt. And look, I respect that. He's always true to himself. He's always authentic. But this Brady thing has really exposed some flaws in how to handle a superstar. And he's had superstars in the past. And like last week, we, we get we get the, the, the criticism, the open criticism of Brady. We get the passive-aggressive stuff. You got Byron Leftwich jumping on with the Thanksgiving Day press conference saying, our offense is the quarterback, and the quarterback is the offense. It's all him. Everyone's saying it's him, it's him, it's him, it's Tom. It's what he wants. It's what he likes. But we're not seeing what he likes. We're seeing him doing something that belongs to someone else's offense. And then Brady gets a chance to meet with reporters, and this came on Friday. And now nobody really put on the T, the opportunity for him to respond right. to what you know, seems to be fairly constant criticism from Arians. But Brady shoulders the responsibility. He doesn't try to push the blame to someone else. Now, it may have reached a little bit of a critical mass from the standpoint of trying, you know, to, to draw Brady out yesterday. Here's the question and the answer that ultimately caused his press conference after the game to be two minutes and 21 seconds long. We'll let you hear it and we'll react to it on the other side. 
the, there's been some folks that have had some chatter about, you know, you, you still look like you're running someone else's offense. One of your former teammates even said on TV that he thinks that you need a new head coach. What do you make of all that noise? No, it's just the external noise that when you're losing, you know, that's what you deal with. So, uh, you know, I love p playing for, for the guys that I play with, the coaches, the whole organization's been unbelievable. And I think what, uh, you know, we just got to go out and, I certainly have to do a better job the last four weeks of the year. So, appreciate it. Just have a good week. There were other reporters queued up and ready to go, and they weren't happy that Tommy walked away when he did. And look, yes, there's always going to be external noise if you're losing. But he had 20 years in New England when his coach did not add to the external noise with internal fodder for the external noise to get louder and louder. When Brady had a particularly bad game in 2014 against the Kansas City Chiefs, he seemed Chiefs, different quarterback, yeah. but even worse result, embarrassment on Monday Night Football, the head coach defended Tom Brady. Scott Somebody asked the, the idea question of being uh, evaluated, uh, is, right? it, is, And is it possible that Jimmy Garoppolo could take, and, and it was the Belichick scowl, and it was the on to Cincinnati mantra over and over again. He had a coach for 20 years who would defend him to the death against any and all critics on the outside. That's right. He doesn't have that now. Yeah. He doesn't have that now. And I, I think he, he knew or should have known what he was signing up for when he went to Tampa Bay. But, you know, the walk off there after two minutes and 21 seconds. He, yes, he's frustrated with himself, but I think he also doesn't want to go down that path. I think he's trying to wall himself off from even acknowledging yeah. that he has a coach who is willing to publicly do something that his 20 year head coach never did. No, I, I, I think there is probably some of that. Uh, you know, I think more than anything, like Brady's handling himself, you know, like a pro. There, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I mean, he always says the right things, all of that. You know, I'll go back to kind of what you said here to start this little start, uh, this conversation before we went to Brady. You talked about, you know, Arians being with Peyton Manning and Ben Roethlisberger, and he's been with other superstar quarterbacks. This, this is different. I'm sorry. I mean, as much as awesome as I think Peyton Manning is and all those things, man, this is Tom Brady and just the normal common fan who's just paying to the paying attention to the NFL to the corner of their eye. Oh, oh, these teams play each other this week. Oh, cool. All right. I'll sit down on Sunday and watch the games. Right. That just that that kind of fan. They just see Tom Brady, Tampa Bay Bucks. They're supposed to be in the Super Bowl. Super Bowl. It's Tom Brady. All I've known from football the last 20 years as a casual fan is Tom Brady, New England Patriots, they'll be in the final four. Brady is one of those comments. And I think that's, it, it's mounting on them down there. And yeah, I don't think they expected to be seven and five with this good of a football team, the defense, everything we've talked about. So they're feeling it. And I'm sure Brady is sick of this crap a little bit. There's no doubt. Um, but they all signed up for it and they can cry me a river some other place and they got to figure it out here in the last four weeks of the year. But, but the other question is, and you're starting to hear the same things I've been hearing, will he sign up for it again? And the powers that be, the people who write the checks in Tampa Bay, the Glazer family, very interested in making sure that no matter what else happens as a result of this season, Tommy chooses to come back next year. Right. People aren't going to buy tickets when they can buy tickets again to come see Bruce Arians coach. They're going to buy tickets, and they're going to be excited because Tom Brady is the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that is maybe now that they're going to slow down for a few days and you get out of that week-in and week-out grind, got a game to get ready for. You know, if the Glazers want to, hey, coach, we need to talk to you. Oh, sorry, I got a game to get ready for. Well, let's talk during the bye week. Well, yeah. the bye week's here. And and uh, it, it could be that we hear, and, and this is informed speculation, I think is the best way to say it. It could be we hear a kinder, gentler Bruce Arians coming out of this bye week because my guess is at some point over the next week, someone named Glazer is going to make it very clear to him that in this rock, paper, scissors, did yeah. I get it right that time? Yeah, you did. Rock, paper, scissors contest. Um, Brady is the rock and Arians is the scissors if it comes down to it. No doubt. I mean, it, it, this is Tom Brady, two-year contract. Year one pandemic didn't get to capitalize of all the things Tom Brady in Tampa Bay. I would think, and that's, I think, where we both have heard it's, hey, 
we got to make sure Tom's really happy here in year one to make sure we get year two and we could capitalize on everything in our $50 million investment and all those type of things. I definitely think that's a real aspect of this. And I think, too, hey, listen to what Bruce Arian said at the start of the segment. I, I don't care who you are, all-star team or not, whatever. You need to practice. You need the offseason. That did hurt them. And maybe these, but this bye week will help them kind of go back and, and formulate – an offense that they feel fits both of them because that's to me the biggest thing you know you talked you said the word identity I don't know really what their identity is it's oh hey this series two tight ends they run the ball next series it's shotgun 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 we're gonna throw the ball every play and you're just like man wait what happened to the good offense we saw last series and uh, it's a little all over the place and to me that's where they need to get on the same page and figure out how they want to attack on that side of the ball it was former teammate Rob Nikovich last week in an appearance on ESPN who suggested that Brady needs a different head coach. And I, I just I don't think what's happening this year is sustainable into 2021. And if it continues, it very well could be that Brady has a new head coach next year. And that head coach will probably some be someone that he signs off on or flat out has requests. to be. If they want to make this if they want to make this work. That's the way to make it work. If has Brady's the center of the universe, right. he has to say, here's who I want my coach to be. Yeah, that, that's where I think no offseason and everything hurt because uh, to, to like exactly, you know, Brady's the king. He's 43. He is limited in certain things he can do. You know, they, you got to do things, and this is where New England was great for him. New England, you know, even though the players weren't great, they still had a system – that could really utilize and capitalize on all that Brady had to offer here at the late point of his career, his ability. Oh, I'm in the spread. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. This coverage. I know where to go. Oh, and McDaniels and Belichick have given me lots of answers here to get six and seven yard completions, wherever that may be on the field. The bucks are not built like that. And that's where no off season really hurt. First off, the receivers aren't built to be the Julian Edelman, Wes Welker, Danny Amendola, jitterbug types. Mike Evans is, he's a big man. Chris Godwin's a bigger man. You know, they don't have that as much. And then the offense and Bruce Arians and them, they're not like that. So that's where, you know, I think you might have to see Tampa bend a little bit as far as the coaching staff to adhere to what Brady wants to do because, that is what he does best at this point of his career, and that does set him up, I think, for his best chance of success. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.